I'm Maddie, and today I'm going for a hike in the countryside. But I've got to get across the city first. It's quite a long way, too far to walk, but I know something that can get me there. It travels on rails. People climb on board from a platform, but it's not a train. Do you know what it is? Look, there's one. Did you guess right? It's a tram. But how does a tram move along the lines to get us from place to place? Do you know how a tram works? Let's find out. How does it work? Tram! To find out how a tram works, I've come to a tram depot. A tram depot is where trams start and finish their journeys. It's also where they're mended after a long day taking people around the city. And I've been given special permission to show you the different parts of the tram. It's made up of different sections for all the people to sit in. Shall we count them? One, two, three, four, five. It has 12 metal wheels and eight motors. Here's one. The motors make the tram move because they power the wheels. A bike gets its power from your legs. Sailing boats get their power from the wind. And most cars get their power from petrol or diesel. And some use electricity. But do you know how a tram gets its power? If you look above the tram, can you see the wires? The wires send electricity into the tram, which powers the motors so they can turn the wheels. Let me explain. This metal part is a motor. It's much smaller than the ones on a tram, but it works in a similar way. So I've popped on a wooden wheel. Just like the tram, our motor needs electricity to move the wooden wheel. We're going to get electricity from a battery. Electricity travels from the battery through this wire to the motor, then through this wire back to the battery, and it goes round and round and round. We call this an electric circuit. Look, when the motor is powered by the battery, the wheel that's attached to it spins round. Let's see what happens if I make a break in the circuit. By taking out the battery, I've made a gap so the electricity can't get round anymore and the motor stops. And the wheel stops spinning. Electric trams work in the same way. Can you see the metal arm on the roof of the tram? That's called a pantograph. And the wire above it is called the contact wire and it carries electricity. When the pantograph touches the contact wire, electricity can travel to the motors that will power the wheels to make the tram move. The tram has become part of an electric circuit. But to find out how a tram moves along the tracks, I think we should take a closer look. For miles and miles, the tram runs along the electric circuit on the contact wire, which is held up by the messenger wire hangs from smaller wires called droppers. The droppers make sure that the contact wire stays nice and straight. If the contact wire goes wobbly, the electric circuit breaks and the tram stops moving. As the tram goes along, it picks up more electricity at stops on the way called substations. Substations are like big batteries that give more power to the contact wire. As long as the pantograph is in touch with the contact wire, it powers the motor and the tram can take passengers on their journey. How clever is that? So we can see all of this in action for ourselves. I've got special permission to put some of my special cameras on the tram. All the special cameras are set. It's time to hop on board. And the driver is letting me ride at the front of the tram with him. Darren is the tram driver, and the first thing he does is press a big yellow button. This lifts the pantograph.
stuff up. And look, my special camera is showing it touching the contact wire. Now the tram has been connected to the electric circuit, it has electricity to move the wheels. So the tram can go. And that means it's time to leave. Can you see the rails? That's what the tram's wheels roll on. And they guide them in the right direction. Oh look, there's another tram. Hello. To drive the tram, Darren uses a lever called a driving brake controller, a DBC. When he pushes it forward, the tram moves forward. When he pushes it further forward, the tram moves faster. <laughs> Whee! Look, here's a tram stop. the lift, Darren. Thank you, I loved finding out how trams work. What was your favourite bit? Can you remember the name of the arm on the roof of the tram? That's right, it's the pantograph. Did you hear the sound of the tram's bell when it left the depot? And did you see how the tram's wheels followed the track on my special camera? If we go on a journey in a tram or a car, or if we're walking, we need to know where we're going. I want to hike in the hills, but I need to make sure I'm going in the right direction. What could I use to help me? That's right, I can use a map. There are lots of different types of maps. Digital maps on computers and phones. Maps that sailors use out at sea. And paper maps, like this one. This map shows us roads, rivers, hills and footpaths. But how do we know that everything's in the right place? How is a map made? Let's find out. How is it made? how a map's made, I've come to a housing estate. Here, some of the roads and houses are still being built or are so new, they haven't been put on a map yet. I'm going to meet my friend Sarah. Look, there she is. Sarah is a surveyor and it's her job to look at an area, record everything she sees so it can be put on a map. To record the things she sees, Sarah has some special gadgets. This stick is called a staff, and the bit that looks like a hat on the top is called a GPS receiver. A GPS receiver gets messages from machines called satellites. Satellites are high up in space, and they have cameras on them that can see the whole of planet Earth, where we live. The satellite sends a message to the GPS receiver on the staff to tell Sarah exactly where we're standing. And this mark just here, that is the exact position of the staff. In this empty space, there's a new road and a couple of new houses that are missing. So Sarah has to walk around and draw them on the map. I'm going to put my special camera on Sarah's tablet so we can see how the map changes as she draws on the road and the houses. OK? Sarah starts by drawing in the road and the pathways. And she does this by walking up and down and marking the points where she stands. Look, you see the path being built on Sarah's tablet. And now the roads are in place, Sarah can draw in the house. Has finished the job and now we can see the new road, the path and the new house. Once all the information has been recorded, Sarah sends it to the map 
Decision-Making Command Center. Inside the Map Making Command Center, all of the information collected by surveyors like Sarah is made into maps by map makers. Map makers are called cartographers, and all these cartographers are adding the new information to a huge map of Great Britain. It's called the Master Map. Martin is a cartographer, and he's looking at a piece of the Master Map on his screen. And look, that's where we were with Sarah. You can see the new road, the pathway, and the new house. Wow, this is the server room, and it's full of computers that store all of the information, every bridge, road, hill, building, house, that we can see on a map of Great Britain. Can you hear that whirring sound? That's the noise of all these computers working away. There are over half a billion different things on a map of Great Britain. And because new things are built all the time, the map changes every day. There could be up to 20,000 changes daily. When all the new information has been added to the master map, it can be printed off. And here it is the new part of the map that we saw Sarah mapping earlier. And here we are. The part that was missing has been filled in. Here's the new road and the new house. This new section of map can now be added to new paper maps or maps that you use on your computer or mobile phone. I loved finding out how a map is made, did you? What was your favourite part? remember the name of the people whose job it is to make maps. That's right, it's a cartographer. Do you remember the sound of the room where all the maps are stored? And on my special camera, did you see Sarah drawing the map on her tablet? And this is a finished map, all ready to help me find my way. So the next time you use a map to visit a friend's house or go on a journey, you'll know how it was made. And if you catch a tram, you'll know how it moves along using electricity from the wires above. I'll see you next time. Bye. There are lots of things.